why is a billionaire from New York who came down from an escalator who was twice married, three times, three times married and twice divorced, the most pro-life president in American history? Why is it that it took a billionaire from New York who was formerly a Planned Parenthood donating Democrat to put Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and 200 circuit court judges on the Supreme Court? Why is it that a guy that never served before in American politics was able to renegotiate NAFTA, get us out of the WTO, get tell the WHO to go pound sand, tell the UN to go pound sand? renegotiate NATO altogether, get us out of the JCPOA, make sure those billions of dollars we sent Iran are not going there anymore, move the embassy to Jerusalem, recognize the Golan Heights, deregulate the American economy, make us energy independent, finally build the wall. Why is it that that guy did it? It's because every single other person that preceded him besides President Reagan was part of the problem. They were part of the very same community of people that were Ivy League educated, said one thing and did another, were part of the ruling class that protected the agency, protected the bureau, protected the DOJ, and as long as you said the right things and kept the deficits going, raised the taxes, deteriorated the industrial base, boosted Wall Street profits, kept the, kept the borders wide open so that we could have foreign nationals domiciling on this, our country that do not share our values, eventually get benefits, their kids can vote against our own values, then things will be just fine. Why is it that this guy is different? It's because unlike any other president, he could have been in the ruling class. He said no thanks. He had enough money to be in the ruling class. He's got more money than James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok, Stroke, Smirk, his lover, Lisa Page, and the person who probably published his book combined and multiplied times 100. He's the only president in modern history to have his own plane and actually go to probably a smaller plane when he becomes president of the United States. He's one of the only president, presidents that was a best-selling author, number one TV show on The Apprentice, NBC, literally was in every single rap song, was glamorized. President Barack Obama said the American dream is to be what? Is to be Donald Trump. That's what he said the American dream was. Why is it that this guy's all of a sudden the populist here? He's supposed to be part of the ruling class. It's because he's a defector from it. It's because he was in the dinners. He was in the cocktail parties. He heard the language. He heard the contempt that the ruling class, the Wall Street financiers, the Washington, D.C. lobbyists, and the Silicon Valley elites that he had to be around. He knew the contempt that they had for the plumber, electrician, the carpenter, the bricklayer, and the person building the very same building that he was financing. So he took the woman rink mentality, the philosophy that built that woman rink quicker and better than anyone could have imagined, despite the New York City bureaucracy and the, munici the municipal burdensome rules. And he said, I'm going to bring this to Washington, D.C., and I'm actually going to do something that a politician has never done before. I'm going to tell you the truth. No matter how brutal and honest it is, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. From the time he went down the escalator, he was the only person running for office that talked about China immigration, the two issues that are most affecting our country now. How was this possible? Because he listened to the very people the ruling class hated. He would walk a job site and he would ask him, what, what's on your mind? He says, man, I'm really worried that we're getting taken over by China. I'm really worried that we're getting too many people in this country. I'm worried I can't pay for health care. He internalized. That's what a populist is, someone who listens to the people. So what makes President Trump different? This is a president who didn't need his job. He's the only president in American history who's going to be poorer after becoming president than before. He's not going to sign a book deal big enough to possibly make up for the gains. His son, investigated by every single authority imaginable, from Bob Mueller to the House Intelligence Committee to Adam Schiff to the Federal Bureau of Investigation after being set up for that very same meeting. His businesses audited and currently under criminal investigation by the New York Attorney General for no reason and no grounding for other. His other son, Eric Trump, his charity gets shut down for self-dealing despite no evidence at all. He just wants to give treatment to cancer kids, St. Jude's Hospital. His 11-year-old son, under constant and daily attacks for just existing as a teenager or early, you know, a 12 or 12 or 13-year-old in this society. How dare he live? He's the only person that would be more damaged materially, philosophically, and morally. Every other president ends up better on the back end. They end up being able to write their stoic journal and drama and being better respected. This guy is a vessel for us, a vessel for those of us that have nothing but resentment for the kingdom of Washington, D.C., the type of people that think everything is just perfectly fine because we, did, we, we just built a Hermes. Hermes is now in Reston, Virginia, don't you know? Louis Vuitton's in Fairfax County, everybody. Things are great. Didn't you know that we literally have Dolce & Gabbana now in Georgetown? Things must be wonderful. You go into Washington, D.C., the cranes are as far as you can possibly see. The construction cranes, they're trying to rebuild the, Par the Parthenon, the, the Giza pyramids quicker than anything I've ever seen. It's 
More construction happening in D.C. perpetually. Why? It's the only place in America. This is why 8 out of 10 of the wealthiest counties in America are around Washington, D.C. It's the only place in America where they get richer at gunpoint. They have a multi-trillion dollar cash flow happening into their center, into their power structure every single year, not because we want it. If Chicago and Minneapolis and Detroit, if people get rich there, they have to convince you to buy their products. Maybe it's manufacturing, maybe it's automobiles, maybe it's Best Buy, which is, of course, a Minneapolis company. But Washington, D.C. is different. They do it at gunpoint. This is why Trump is different, and that's why I wrote the book. <clears throat> market. Market. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not hear a better argument for the president of the United States than that two and a half minutes right there. Cut it, mark it, drop it in. Are you a leftist? Are you communist? Are you Marxist? Are you super right wing? Doesn't matter. You can't disagree with that. That is the best argument you will ever hear condensed, distilled like a, like a proof alcohol into why Charlie Kirk believes in this president. And so if you're looking, look no further. That two-minute clip right there. Well, thank Cut you. it. Email us, freedom at charliekirk.com. Here's one for you. Thank you, Benny.